preach word God that it may minister to our needs take away every pain father those who have come in the need of healing looking for deliverance we pray that our coming will not be in vain and God for all that you continue to do for us we will forever give you the glory we will give you the honor I'm the praise and the people of the Lord shout it amen, amen. shout it again amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I thank God for it being Easter and it just don't seem like Easter until I get some of the Easter stuff that I kind of grew up with and, and this is one of them it says oh yeah, yeah. anybody remember that yes, yes. Right the nails in my hands laugh at me where I stand today. Amen. Amen. She has been a lifelong friend for many, many years, and we are so thankful to have her here in the country. And I want you to know that we are enjoying Brad, Corinne, and Veronica. Amen. We are just loving them to death. 
from Luke 23 and 35. Just that one passage of scripture. And the people stood behold. Rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. I'm going to read a small portion of that. He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. God bless the readers, the hearers of his word, and the saints said, amen. amen. For a brief moment today, on this wonderful occasion, if he be Christ. A number of things have already occurred. The last supper with the disciples. The betrayal by his trusted friend, treasurer of the church, Brother Judas. They've gone to the Garden of Gethsemane that this ministry is named after. And while Jesus was praying, the church was at sleep. He did not confuse or get disappointed in them because he said, truly, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Judas returns with a whole battery of soldiers. Many scholars say around 300 of them. And he gives word, he whom I kiss, that's the one you arrest. And so Jesus has been arrested, carried from judgment hall to judgment hall. The time is about 3 a.m. in the morning. And they decide to put him on trial, not even in a real courtroom, but at the home of the high priest. And while he's on trial this time of morning, false witnesses come forth. And by the time the sun comes up, he finds himself traveling between Pilate's house and Herod's house. And both of them are declaring that I find no fault in him. Yes. Nevertheless, he's beaten with 30 and 9 stripes. Made to carry a tree to Calvary. A place in the Bible that was called Golgotha. A place of the stars. The same crowd that cheered him on a few days ago. Crying, Hosanna. Glory to the King of Kings. Now cry, crucify him. Away with him. It is amazing how fast people can turn on you. They have driven nails through his hands and his feet. With his bloody back against the tree, they have lifted him high between two guilty brothers. And now they are deriding him saying that if he be Christ, why won't he save himself? The writer in Matthew said, you've saved others. What's wrong that you cannot save yourself? If he be Christ. That phrase is still going forward today. When we look around us and understand the history of our nation, of people everywhere, we understand that there are those that still doubt the risen Savior. That there are those that still do not understand who Jesus is. But when you read the word of God, all the way from Genesis to Revelation, they testify of Jesus. In Genesis, God himself spoke. When he said, let us make man. The us was Jesus, his son, and the power of the Holy Spirit. In John, the genesis of the New Testament, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, still talking about Jesus. In the history of the Word, when you go back to Isaiah, we call him the eagle eye prophet, because he was able to look through 710 years and declare a virgin shall give birth. Talked about his name being called Wonderful Counselor, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Isaiah saw the stripes on his back and said, by his stripes we are healed. In the Old Testament, Jesus shows up. You recall him dressed as a man, showing up to visit Father Abraham, challenging the cruelty and the wickedness 
that was going on in the city where Abraham's nephew Lot lived. Talked about if I could find 50 good men, well, maybe 45. Got down to five men. Jesus showed up. He shows up as a warrior for Daniel. His name was Michael. Gabriel got in trouble with the king of Persia, and they needed some help. So Michael had to come to his rescue. Jesus dressed as a warring angel. Yes. Ezekiel declared him to be a wheel in the wheel. David declared him to be the lily of the valley. Yes. Those that traveled from Egypt to the promised land said he's a rock in a weary land. Yes. Others have testified about this Jesus. We understand that he was led to the slaughter like a sheep that would not defend himself. But oh, what if they had called the real witnesses? The woman at the well testified when she ran throughout the city saying, come see a man. Share it with me everything I've ever done wrong. The good Samaritan would tell you that he was my friend. Even though we were not the same color, same race, from the same background, he nourished me and told the innkeeper, if I owe you anything, I'll pay it on my return trip. Yes. Peter would tell you I was a gangbanger, fisherman by trade, but I was a part of the Essen gang. And, 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 when, and when I met Jesus, he made me a fisherman of men. The woman with the issue of blood will tell you one touch at the heel of his garment and your life would be turned around. The man by the pool of Bethesda for 30 and 8 years said, all the asked me is would I be made whole? Yes. Yes. The preacher, the ruler of the synagogue had a 12 year old girl. They said she was dead but when he sent for Jesus, they told him you're too late. Your daughter's already died. Jesus told him be not afraid. Let's go to your house anyhow. And when Jesus got there, the girl that was there, he made her to rise again. They could have found a real witness. But if he be Christ, Matthew 27 and 42 says that the crowd around him said he saved others. Himself, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel. Yes. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. The 43rd verse say he trusted in God. Let him, let God deliver him now. If he will have him or he said I am the son of God. Why wouldn't Jesus come down from the cross. He said to some folk who were mocking him, don't you know my father's got 10,000 angels waiting at my beck and call and I could have called them at any moment and they would have come to my rescue. Why wouldn't he come down? I searched the word and I found a few reasons that perhaps you will agree with. The first one is a promise had to be kept. The writer of Hebrews put it this way, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do my Father's will. And so the Master understood that I have an assignment, I have a task. It's not according to man, not according to what people say, but according to what my Father would have. I've come that I might do His will. And then they accused him of saving others. You remember they wanted to kill the woman caught in adultery. The centurion told him, unless you come, <coughs> my servant will die. Lazarus was already dead. But Jesus saved all of them. Why wouldn't he come down from the cross? His father had already testified. Behold, my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He has to continue to obey his father. He says, my father will honor me if I keep my word. If Jesus had come down, that means John the Baptist would have been a liar when he looked up out of the river Jordan one day and saw Jesus coming and said, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. This would have meant that he deceived Martha and Mary. 
But they said to him, Master, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Jesus said, do you not know who I am? Yes, we know that you are the Christ, the Son of God, and that even now you can speak and things will happen. But our brother said, he said, if you really understood who I am, I am the resurrection. Yes. He said, though a man be dead in me, yet shall he live. Show me where you're buried. You're too late. Show me where you laid it. Yes. When he called Lazarus by name, Lazarus got up from the grave and they began to understand we do have the Son of God with us. Yes. And so now, here we are at the passion of Jesus. And they have asked him all night long, are you the king of the Jews? He's answered them, thou sayest it, but never would he defend himself. What tragedy has occurred at three o'clock that morning? Not even in a real courthouse. And when the judgment of the judges came back that said, I find no fault in him, they still would not accept it. And so now he here, here he is in this second parade on his way to the place of the stones where the nails have been driven through his hands and feet. And when Jesus was hanging there, even the thieves on both sides said, if you are who you say you are, why don't you say yourself and us too? But while Jesus was hanging there on the cross, I believe that he was able to look through the generations of time. Yes. And he saw you. Yes. Your sister and your brother. Yes. He saw me. Yes. My children and my grandchildren. He saw all of us get saved. And every word that he uttered had you and I in mind. Yes. If I had a little voice, I'd tell you, he thought I was worth it. Yes. So he came yes. and changed my life. He thought I was worth keeping. Yes. So he cleaned me up inside. He thought I was to die for. Yes. So he sacrificed his life so I can be free. Oh, yes. I can be whole and I can tell everyone Yes, he is the Christ. Every statement that he gave, and let me just give you a couple of them. When they were killing him, he said, Father, forgive them. But they know not what they are doing. Look at somebody close to you and tell them, you are forgiven. Tell them again, you are forgiven. The next thing he told them was when it was almost over, there was this brother who said, Master, when you come into your kingdom, will you please, sir, remember me? Jesus stopped dying long enough to tell that person that everyone else had given up on. This day, this day, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Look at somebody and tell them, it's going to be all right now. And finally he told his father, Father, I have done your will. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. The word of God says he hung his head and died. After a while, when the earth and the universe that he created recognized that the one that had helped create all things was dead, the sun went and hid itself. Because my grandfather said the S-U-N could not shine with the S-O-N. And so the sun, when it hid itself, and midday became like midnight. All confused, the moon thought, oh, I must have missed something. And so the moon was shining. It does that when it gets dark. But when the moon started shining, look down at what was called Gaffa. But from now on will be known as Calvary. The Bible says the moon drifts away in blood. Somebody shall go over it. And my Savior is dead now. And the enemy is having a party. 
Satan is rejoicing and saying, thank God we won. I can hear the old type as they put together Paul's analogy of what happened at Calvary. Because we understand that the sting of death is supposed to be sin. And when death stings us with sin, we die. Then they put us in the grave. The grave is supposed to hold us forever and ever. But not this time. Because this time, it was the cross. And I can hear them arguing. Oh, death, do you have it? Death said, I killed him with nails in his hand. I killed him with nails in his feet. I killed him, all right, because we whipped him all night long. I made sure he was dead when they pierced him in the side. And I saw blood and water run out together. Oh, I see old man Joseph begging for his body put it in a borrowed tomb because it was almost time for the Sabbath. And so death said, yes, I got it. He called up grave and he said, grave, can you hold it? But he said, we got it. No more blood in him. No more breath in him. No more life in him. And they have sealed the tomb. And so death and grave are still rejoicing. But I heard Brother David say they put him in the ground, but the ground couldn't hold him. And he declared, lift up ye gates, and oh ye gates, be lifted up, and let the king of kings come in. Who will? King of kings, the Lord God Almighty, strong and righteous, powerful and omnipotent, he is the King of kings. Somebody see it? Yeah. Say it! Yeah. Peter said that while in the tomb, the same Jesus that Pilate said, I find no fault in him, went down to hell. Knocked on the gates of hell, bells above. Satan's chief servant said, Who is it? He said, Tell them, I am that I am. It's knocking at the door. What's your name? He said, Tell them, there are holes in my hands, holes in my feet. I got stripes on my back. I got a crown of thorns. And Satan said, that's Jesus. Open the gate and let him in. But when Jesus got to hell, he preached the word until all those that were dead broke the caskets, broke their tombs, got up in Jerusalem and started walking the streets. And somebody that had died waiting on Jesus got up from the grave and walked the streets of Jerusalem. I can see somebody saying that, that looks like grandma, that looks like grandpa, that looks like my uncle, that looks like my brother. Because Jesus down in hell preached the word until the prisoners were set free. Somebody say yes. Yeah. How long we I wait here? How long do I stay here? And the master said, a little while longer. A little while longer. I gotta go back to earth. They think they killed me. They think they destroyed me. And so early on Sunday morning, early on Sunday morning, I don't know where the preachers were, but early Morning. Here come the mothers, the sisters, the missionary evangelists, and who will roll away the stone? Or when they got there and looked in the tomb, 
Mary weeps, the other one screams. He's not here. Oh, where have they taken my Lord and Savior? Where have they moved him? Somebody stole his body. But I heard another writer say to the women, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Today, if you have not accepted him as Lord and Savior, it's real simple. The scripture says that if you would just only acknowledge that you need him, that's step one. Come on, everybody, say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I need you. I need you. 
The second step is to believe. For if you believe that he is the son of God, he died and he rose on the third day, and he's now sitting on the right hand of the Father, if you believe that, you can be saved. Come on and say with me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. You rose again on the third day. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father. Finally, it says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is the Son of God, you shall be saved. Come on and say with me, Father, I confess that Jesus is your Son and my Lord. I receive him with all that I have. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Turn around and tell three people around you, thank God I'm saved. Come on, just tell three people, thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Now that you're saved, everything that went wrong yesterday, last year, and years before. Somebody help me shout, it's over. It's over. Every sin that you may commit in the future, you have been covered by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody help me say, it's over. And now you belong to your Heavenly Father. Today, those of you who may be without a church hall, I'd love to be your preacher. I'd love to be your minister of the gospel here on the earth to make sure that you and I We'll walk through those pearly gates together, going in to meet our Father. If you'd like to be a part of our family here at the Gethsemane Church, will you just raise your hand? I won't even make you come all the way to the front. Just elevate your hand and say, Brother Gavin, I, I think I'd like to be a part of this family. Here's everyone today. Just elevate your hand right there where you are. Right there where you are. Right there where you are. Amen. And if you don't, you're not sure you want to come, come back next week. <laughs> Nothing will have changed. We will still be friendly, outgoing, loving, kind. And we will just love on you until you will realize you got to have this kind of love. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you on today. If you will be kind enough to just take your seats for one moment.